Hello, my name is Honey Thomas and welcome to the second part of this mini gem. This old heart of mine is weak for you. In this, the second of the talks about heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, we aim to cover how to diagnose heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and summarise the treatment for this condition. When we look at the pathophysiology of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, a variety of factors contribute to an abnormality of left ventricular filling in diastole and an increase in the filling pressures, which leads to an increase in the back pressure for the left atrium and in turn leads to pulmonary edema and the other manifestations of heart failure. It's a complex interaction of a variety of lifestyle and metabolic factors which contribute to a stiffening of the ventricle and the vascular system and leads to a global loss of cardiac vascular and peripheral vascular reserve, which leads to this manifestation and the development of symptoms and signs of heart failure. This diagram summarizes the European Society of Cardiology's recommendations for the diagnosis of heart failure and is actually very similar to the British guideline recommendations. It suggests that we look at the clinical history, physical examination and ECG. And if at least one of these is suggestive that a diagnosis of heart failure may be likely, that we should go on and measure a natriuretic peptide, either an N-terminal pro-BNP or BNP. And these are chemicals released from the atria when they're stretched. They're rather like the D-dimer of heart failure. If they're normal, it's very unlikely that this patient has clinical heart failure to explain their symptoms. If they're elevated, it's possible they have heart failure, but it's important to remember there are many other reasons why a BNP may be elevated, including pulmonary disease, and most notably atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation can be associated with a BNP in the thousands, and in that setting, the raised BNP doesn't offer you any clues as to whether their patient has clinical heart failure or not. So if the BMP is raised in echocardiography, it should be carried out, uh, or alternative cardiac imaging. And if heart failure is confirmed on imaging, then it, we need to think about the etiology and consider treatment according to what we've found. The flowchart makes the diagnosis of heart failure look very simple, but in fact the box at the end is where the devil is in the detail. In order to make a diagnosis of heart failure, we need to be able to understand and interpret the imaging and that can be difficult. In the setting of heart failure and preserved and mid-range ejection fraction, the first of all we need to have signs and symptoms of heart failure. We need to know that the ejection fraction, the systolic function is either normal or just mildly impaired. But we then also need to see something on the echo, otherwise everybody with a bit of breathlessness could be receiving a diagnosis of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and certainly in the past I think we have overdiagnosed this condition. Structural echo abnormalities include left ventricular hypertrophy leading to stiffness and left atrial enlargement. Functional echo abnormalities you might see could be elevated pulmonary artery pressures or specific Doppler markers of diastolic dysfunction which would be reported on the bottom of their echo report. Importantly, it isn't heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction if you're able to identify a specific cause of heart failure, which may include infiltrative cardiomyopathy, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and amyloid and hemochromatosis, valvular heart disease, right-sided heart failure due to pulmonary hypertension or right ventricular cardiomyopathy, pericardial disease, tamponade or constriction, high output states and arrhythmias and transient LV dysfunction, which has got better by the time the patient's been imaged. The treatment of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is notable in that there is very little that we can offer as a specific treatment for this disease, which is associated with huge levels of morbidity. There are 11 pages of guidance in the European Society of Cardiology, latest publication for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, but there's half a page for HEFPEF. Despite multiple clinical trials, there are no treatments which consistently reduce morbidity and mortality. And perhaps that's just a marker of the fact that these patients have lots of comorbidities.
we need to treat their edema with diuretics and that makes them feel better. Good blood pressure control, trying to maintain sinus rhythm or good AF rate control will help. We should treat all the associated conditions ag aggressively. There's no evidence for ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, spironolactone, cardiac resynchronization therapy or implantable defibrillators. The most important advice we can give to patients is to eat less, move more and stop smoking. And the lifestyle factors, I think, have a greater impact than any of the pharmacological treatment that we can offer. Unfortunately, it's much harder to persuade people to do it. So in summary, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is a complex syndrome incorporating symptoms, signs and serum markers of heart failure together with the preserved left ventricular systolic function. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction is a diagnosis which requires us to find some specific structural or functional abnormality on cardiac imaging in addition to the other clinical signs of heart failure. Medical treatment is very limited and is essentially confined to diuretics and good management of frequently associated conditions and advising weight loss and management of hypertension and diabetes. At the end of this module, you should be aware of how to diagnose heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and how to manage it. Having listened to both parts of the Minigem series, you should feel better able to recognise, investigate, diagnose and manage heart failure with preserved ejection fraction.